is that there is a local twist to this story because, of course, Alabama's own Jeff Sessions, he is mentioned pretty frequently in a certain part of this, and, and part of it is because they were looking into, specifically, obstruction of justice. They were looking into obstruction of justice, and because of that, and because Attorney General Sessions was the AG at the time, because Attorney General Sessions was the Attorney General at the time, of course, what had to happen was they had to look into whether or not Trump was actually firing him or intended to fire him so that he could hire a new attorney general and that that person could presumably take uh, take out Robert Mueller and, and in the investigation, because that would have been obstruction of justice if Trump was criminally and intentionally doing so, so that he could end the investigation because he's afraid of what it might dig up. That would have been textbook obstruction of justice. And that's the reason that it was very important, it was imperative that they look into Jeff Sessions and look into some of his background and make sure that this was all taking place. But here's the thing. There's another aspect to this. They also had to look into Jeff Sessions on collusion with Russia. And the reason for that is because there was at least a suspect that he had been dishonest to Congress. And you remember we covered this and, and showed that it wasn't true, but there was at least a suspicion in the public eye and in the, uh, in the Mueller camp in the investigation that was going on as to whether or not Jeff Sessions had intentionally lied to Congress about his relationship to the Russians or not. And they found out what we basically said a couple years ago, which is there was no truth to that that he didn't intentionally mislead anybody, that he didn't even really unintentionally <laughs> mislead anybody, that he was forthcoming about his relationship to Russia and that any of the dealings that he had with them was in his official capacity as a senator, which he was at the time that this took place. And it wasn't even something that happened in, in a smoke-filled room behind closed doors. It was something that happened in the open in a public venue. So it's not like anything could have gone on anyway. But, but nonetheless... Nonetheless, this phantom of, of the Sessions-Trump fight has resurfaced. And here's the thing. First of all, including this portion of the report is just more proof that William Barr is not intentionally hiding the ball here. Because some parts of this report, especially in regards to Sessions, both look unflattering and both at least kind of hint that there may have been something to Donald Trump wanting to fire Jeff Sessions to get rid of Mueller. Now, there was never any action taken place, and that's part of the reason that the investigation didn't see fit to nail him on obstruction of justice, because obstruction not only requires intent, but it requires action. In other words, Trump would have had to have taken active steps to inhibit the ju judicial process, the justice proceedings that were going to presumably hurt him for obstruction of justice to be a viable claim, and that did not happen. And it largely didn't happen because he didn't fire Sessions. And that continued to go on. So that being said, those details in there are actually more evidence that William Barr is not just getting rid of and redacting anything that makes the president look bad. Anything that was kind of public and, and that people already knew about, those details are left in there because everybody knew that Jeff Sessions and Donald Trump had a strained relationship. And so there's no reason really to redact that. And so it seems as though, based on this, that William Barr was including all the information that he could. But this is certainly unflattering to the president, but this is what happened. So some of the exchanges that we have that are just coming out in this report, Trump presumably blamed the entire investigation on Sessions. And I'll read a couple of these quotes real quick. He said the investigation was, quote, all because you recused, of course, referencing Jeff Sessions there. And... First of all, that's incorrect because the firing of Comey, Comey is actually what triggered it, the former FBI director. And so he could say that the investigation was all because of Jeff Sessions. It really wasn't. It was actually because of something Trump did. But nonetheless, there's another quote here. Oh, my, using the Lord's name in vain there, this is terrible. This is the end of my presidency. I'm, and I'm not even going to say what word he used there, but just suffice it to say it's not one you're going to hear in church. Uh, how could you let this happen, Jeff? And then this is another one by Trump. AG is supposed to be the most important appointment. 
Kennedy appointed his brother, Obama appointed Holder, I appointed you and you recused yourself. You left me on an island. I can't do anything. So again, part of the reason this is not redacted is because this is nothing new. Trump hasn't said this and we haven't had this available to us, but we've had very similar statements about Jeff Sessions available to us. I mean, he went on 60 Minutes and basically aired out all the dirty laundry between him and his attorney general. So this is not something that really should surprise anybody. But nonetheless, digging into what, to, what this actually means, this exact same report shows that Donald Trump still has a very skewed idea of what the attorney general is actually supposed to be. And you can look at that, by the way, he's talking about, well, Kennedy appointed his brother and Obama had Holder. He's like, why sh my attorney general should be like that. My attorney general should be somebody that's looking out for me and watching my back. No, that's not the attorney general's job. The attorney general's loyalty is to the law and everybody else second. That's what he's supposed to do. And so this idea that Kennedy had his brother and Eric Holder was Obama's wingman and his buddy. And he said that, and he was running interference for him admitted to this on camera. I mean, yeah, those things are all true, but they're also examples of the way that the attorney general is not supposed to act. Essentially what Donald Trump is saying here is that, Hey, well, they were watching out for the president and they were acting like his wingman here. So I should have an attorney general like that. No, Bad behavior by other people doesn't justify bad behavior on your part. And the attorney general is supposed to be loyal to the law, not the president. Yes, he works for the president. He serves at the president's pleasure. But first and foremost, the attorney general's job is to see that the law is adhered to. And if you're giving a sports analogy, the attorney general is the referee. He's not your offensive line. He's not your, ba he's not your blocker. That's not his job. What he's supposed to do is call balls and strikes, even if it winds up hurting the guy who happened to employ him, that happened to be his boss, in this case, the president of the United States. But here's the crazy thing. Even though Jeff Sessions was do just doing what he thought was right, even though he was just adhering to the law, the truth is that Jeff Sessions did the president a massive favor. It, this wasn't his intention, and this isn't the reason that he did this. But him recusing himself from the Russia investigation was doing Donald Trump a massive favor because all these things of obstruction of justice where the president kind of goes right up to the line of obstruction of justice, but then kind of backs off either firing sessions or having sessions unrecuse himself and then in turn fire Bob Mueller to end the investigation that would have crossed that line. If that had taken place, then there's a very good chance we would be having impeachment proceedings right now. And so Jeff Sessions, even though he wasn't actually trying to watch out for the president, even though he wasn't trying to have the president's back, as it were, Jeff Sessions did a huge favor to the president by recusing himself and stepping away from this. And how do we know that? Here's how we know that. Because the report actually says that. You remember I made this case... I don't know, over a year ago, back when we were on the radio, and I laid out in the law where Jeff Sessions, because of his involvement with the campaign, would have been required as an attorney general to recuse himself in all matters regarding the investigation of that campaign. But here's the thing. This report actually gives new information that reinforces that truth. So let's go ahead and look at the report. This is part of, uh, let's see, this is page 197 and 198. And if you're reading this part, and we're just going to read the first uh, sentence here, the office considered whether in light of these interactions, Sessions committed perjury before or made false statements to Congress in connection with confirmation as attorney general. And it goes on to talk about the alleged, uh, you know, at least the suspicion that he was working with the Russians. And of course, they found that that was not true that he had not been working with the government. You can read the rest of it. it. It talks about his relationship with Ambassador Kislyak and all that. You can read it all for yourself. It's available online. But the point in all of that is, what this means is that Jeff Sessions was also under investigation during this investigation. In other words, Jeff Sessions, because he was 
uh, that he was called into question, he was one of the people that they were looking into, which means had he not recused himself, had he not recused himself, and this report actually says he found out about that in March, which is when he recused, and that his attorney, his attorney, Jeff Sessions' personal attorney, was notified of this at the time. So he knew this, and he knew if he didn't recuse, then it would be obstruction of justice. Had this not happened, it would have dragged Sessions down, and it probably would have dragged Trump down too. And so Jeff Sessions did exactly the right thing in this. Let's go ahead and go to the phones. Good afternoon. What's your name? Hey, John. How's it going? Hey, doing well. So what's your thoughts on all this? Well, first of all, the thing that that I couldn't get over was the fact that people that had been loyal to Jeff Sessions throughout his entire career had voted for him, supported him, and that kind of thing. When he recused himself, they acted as if he had uh, been a Benedict Arnold or something. But he only did what he had to do. That he, he wasn't given any other alternative because of the, the way that it, the law is written and the way that he knew was going to play out with this. He wasn't given any other choice. Well, that's the thing. And so you have to do what you have to do. Right. That's the thing that President we already Trump. showed you according to the law that he would have had to have recused himself anyway. But this report right. just sort of reaffirms that and says now that there are two laws that Jeff Sessions would have been breaking had he not recused himself. See, I said when this happened, I said, if he recused himself, he had to. He wasn't given any other alternative except for that. So, No, I, I completely yeah. agree, and now the report coming out proves that. Well, what do you think people from Alabama are going to do now? How are they going to react to this? Uh, we know we have, and I've been pulling for the president, too, but sure. we have some Trump worshipers in this state, it seems like. And how are they going to react to all of this? I you, just... you know, I I hate to say this, but there's going to be a lot of them. Not all of them, but there's going to be a lot of them that continue to stick to this line. Well, Jeff Sessions could have figured out a way to help the president in this situation. No, he really couldn't have. No, that was, and, that was no, no other alternative. Well, first of all, like I said, it's not the job of the attorney general to help out the president anyway. But even mm -hmm. if it were this still would have been illegal to do. And what bothers me about this whole thing and what really gets under my skin is these are the same people that complained about Eric Holder and Loretta Lynch having the president's back and covering up his mistakes and covering up for Fast and Furious or the IRS. They complained about it then and they complained about their loyalty to the president and their boss then. And now they're saying now that it's their guy and somebody that they like that Jeff Sessions should have just said, screw the law, I'm going to do whatever I can to help out President Trump. Yeah, and you did that. And uh, he has always followed the law. He's in the Constitution. He's always going to stop that. And, you know, you do your, your research and would recognize that your attorney general was going to be that way. So, Right, and that's actually a great quality to have in the attorney general specifically. I mean, you would like to think that all of your constitutional officers would be that way and they would hold their first loyalty to the Constitution above everything else. But that's especially true when you're talking about your attorney general, because sure. that's what the entirety of his job is. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh, it will be interesting to see how all of this unfolds, but the I can assure you this, uh, the, the Progress Network, they're about to explode. <laughs> so I've heard them this afternoon. So. I'm not, I know you're not wrong, but ask yourself this question. When have the progressives in this country ever not been about to explode? <laughs> That's a good point. I mean, it seems like they're always on the verge of exploding. Every little thing is the biggest problem that has ever happened in the history of the world for them. And so That's true. So listen, take care. All right. You have a good one. I appreciate it. Yeah. John from Millbrook. Thank you for being with us today. But yeah, it's a good question. It is a good question. And it is unfortunate that I do think that there are an awful lot of people, even in the state of Alabama, where Jeff Sessions is, of course, originally from and, and a very popular senator for a very long time, many decades before I was even born, in fact. It is really sad and it is very tragic that a lot of people that were big fans of Jeff Sessions and one of the things that they liked about him is that he was an honorable guy that always stuck to the rules and, and did the way, did everything by the letter of the law. That, that very quality is what caused a lot of these people, because of their weird, freakish obsession, really, 
with Donald Trump is always right and he can never do anything wrong and he's just a perfect human being and everybody should do everything, including sacrificing their own political careers and breaking the law in order to help him, this wouldn't have helped him. Even if, even if you're operating by that logic, which I do not understand, this is the reason that I think it would be very difficult to work for President Trump. And I say this as somebody who is a conservative that likes a lot of the things that Trump has done with cutting the regulation state. There's a lot of good that came with the Trump presidency. So I'm not saying this is an enemy or somebody that's a leftist that just hates everything that he does. There's a lot of good that has come with the Trump presidency. But I got to tell you, I would not want to work for the president. And Jeff Sessions is a cautionary tale of why. Because it seems as though, and he's not the only one in this report, that this is true of. That... Some of the president's worst impulses would have led him to actually obstruct justice. Now, granted, and I, I say this trying to be as objective as possible. Now, granted, in light of him being innocent and there not being a shred of truth to the collusion question, I think that Donald Trump's anger is not unjustified. I mean, if you were accused of something that you know you didn't do and you know that nobody around you, at least that you were aware of, did, I mean, you'd be pretty ticked off, too, if people were saying 24 hours a day that you were really a Russian spy and you really hated the country and you were working for the Kremlin. I mean, if you were a patriot and you cared about your country and, and you wanted to serve as the president, yeah, that would tick you off. I don't think that the president's anger is unjustified. I am merely suggesting that it is misdirected. I'm merely saying that Sessions was not the person that should have been the recipient of that anger. And unfortunately, that's what happens sometimes when people get angry. That when people get angry, they lash out at the people that are closest to them that are actually trying to help. And it shows here on several different occasions that not only Sessions, but other people within the president's cabinet were doing everything they could to keep the president out of trouble. And to keep the president from doing something that actually would have obstructed justice. And so because of that, it's just really a thankless job that Jeff Sessions basically did something that committed really political suicide for him. He'll probably never hold an office again, I would guess. I, maybe that's not true, but I don't know. But he at least considered that a possibility. And he took the slings and the arrows and had people that had always admired him and respected him completely turn on him, call him a traitor, call him a coward, saying that he had no honor. He took all those slings and arrows all this time. And the president can't stand him. I mean, did all that and did something that even though I don't think that it was the primary goal of his intention to not fire Mueller and, and not uh, undo his recusal, he put his own career at great political risk. And the president basically dogged him for a year. I mean, that's a thankless job. When you do something and you, you do the best that you can and you are doing a good job and you're doing exactly what you're supposed to do, and not only your boss, but all the people around you that used to be your friends that used to compliment you, turn on you. Now, not all of them have done that. There are a lot of people here in the state of Alabama that still really love Jeff Sessions. But I've been pretty disgusted by the people that are suggesting that even though the law clearly states now we know on two different counts that he would have had to have recused himself and that actually in retrospect, he did the president a big favor by recusing himself and making sure that there was no evidence of obstruction of justice. It just, I, I imagine it's got to really sting for so many people on the right to go after Jeff Sessions in this way. And here's another thing to consider, too. If you're listening to what the left is saying about this right now, what is their number one complaint? What is the number one thing that they are talking about when it comes to this report? Oh, bars crooked. I mean, the Democrats are actually calling for an investigation of Bob Mueller at this point. They were an investigation of William Barr at this point. And the reason they're doing that is they're saying somehow, well, it was crooked. It was tainted somehow. And what they're saying is that Jeff Sessions was out and William Barr was put in right before the, the thing was wrapping up, which 
is absurd. It was already wrapping up and we knew that before we even knew that Jeff Sessions was going to be on his way out. But that's what happened and that's the talking point that they're using now. That somehow William Barr is crooked. I don't believe a word of that. In fact, I just laid out a case for why that's not true. But if he hung out to Jeff Sessions for just a little bit longer and Jeff Sessions was running this and he was running the uh, report coming out and everything else, that would be one less talking point for the Democrats to have. And I really do, I just, I absolutely am disgusted with the way that people have reacted to this and, and the way the president honestly reacted in this as well. Completely innocent. I understand the man's anger. I think the anger is justified. It was justified, but it was put in the wrong place. And by that, I mean it should never have been directed against Attorney General Jeff Sessions, who was just doing the best that he could and, and frankly, did a bang-up job and showed a lot of integrity by sticking to his guns and following the law, even when many, many people that I'm sure that he considered friends and allies were suggesting he break the law because of how it looked. So Jeff Sessions, excellent job. Maybe you're not getting the proper thanks and praise that you deserve in this, but you're definitely getting it from me. And I know that's probably very little consolation at this point, but there are still people that recognize that you did the right thing and you need to know that. Just in case you were wondering, yes, I am a straight white Christian male and a small government constitutionalist which means I have no chance of getting any help from the government and wouldn't accept their help even if they offered. Which means I'm going to need you to like and subscribe because my gun collection is not going to pay for itself.